welcome to the God is a Geek podcast. My name is Adam Cook. This is episode 548 and I am not alone. I am still me, Adam Cook, but I'm joined by the one and only Lyle Carr, of course. Hello, Lyle. Hello, we're here. We're back to record a podcast. I'm second in the uh, introductions, which is a rare treat because I know I know someone who gets upset about that normally, but he's not here, thankfully. Hooray! Well, but, it's going to be a great episode. But, but there is a Chris. <laughs> there is. <laughs> no, it's gone. The moment's gone. Chris White. Hello. Look at that. Look at the vis. I want to say the visage oh. of Chris White. Look at him. Look at him. I realise I haven't been on since the. Uh, I've found my hair cut. I've got, I've got a top knot anymore. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's pretty Gone. damn good. See, if you're not watching this on youtube.com slash God is Geek, you just missed that. You just all, all you heard is a man saying, Look, I haven't got a top knot. <laughs> Look, which is yeah. really odd on a podcast. <laughs> How are you two? You all right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Glad. Glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. Lyle, good? Yeah, I'm also good. I have come into this podcast realising that I don't think I looked at what games we're talking about, so it's going to be as much as a surprise wow. to the listener as it is to me. Good so, God. Uh, actually, they'll have, they might, they'll have seen it in the title. I'm, I'm the only one no, who doesn't no. know right yeah, now. Yeah. For them, this is now. For us, it's the part of, No, that doesn't help anything. I, it's, no, a weird, it's, a, it's a weird one today, because I, I, I genuinely just sort of thought about starting with a rant, because I haven't done that in a long time. <laughs> yes. But but the thing about that is is I think I've got to the age now where anything I say in terms of like moaning is just going to sound like that the the Simpsons gif old man you know yelling yeah. at clouds because I was going to moan about people in crowds with mobile phones and I don't know you see I don't know maybe our audience is like super young and they'd hear that and be like this old man's just he's just completely lost it like I it's... think you need to moan about it now no I'll, I'll, I'll just I'll just look all I'll say is this right is I was recently in a very large crowd of people due to going to a football match. And my, I have some advice for, uh, I think, I no, you know, it's not fair to say predominantly the younger listeners, because that's not fair, because it was everyone. Um, but my advice would be, if you're walking in a crowd where you're kind of like sardines, literally trying to get into a tube station, if you put your phone away, not only can you see in front of you, you won't repeatedly bang into the six foot three large gentleman in front of you with that phone and tut. Mm. That's all I'm saying. And now it's time see, to talk about. Oh. <laughs> see, I was excited. About, I kind of thought you were going to say like this was going to be more of like a, a like gigs or pubs or something like that. No, and I was like, I... I was kind of getting ready to be like, I kind of understand that. But while walking in like a crowded cubic, and when I say cute. crowded, I mean like literally like. Yeah. And the thing is, is right. Is there was one person I spotted, and it was a man. That's all. I was. It doesn't really matter about the age, and they were a bit young. But again, everyone's doing it. And it was repeatedly banging every time. I just felt I can't do it because you're not in the same room. But this little like mm, in the in my back and every time it was like, <laughs> okay, okay, fair enough. We're in a crowd, fair enough. Second time, <laughs> okay, cool. Third time, same guy. And you're like, this must be on you at this point. <laughs> just did just put it in your pocket and then. <laughs> at any point, did you think about taking like a half step back and seeing if his phone just went flying? Mate, to be honest with you, the things I was thinking are way too dark for this podcast. Um, mm. No, no, genuinely, I was just like, I just, I was, Jesus. I was genuinely a bit like the old man. At class. I was kind of bemused. It wasn't annoying me. I wasn't like getting like. I was just like, I, I, it was. Do you know when you have you ever had that thing where you almost wish you could sort of like grab your spirit and just put it above, to, and you feel like you're looking down at everything going on, and you, you there's like a moment of clarity where you're like, what happened? What happened to us? <laughs> And, and and it was kind of like I just I, I felt the third bang and I looked around and all you all I saw was just everyone was like that and I was just like oh my god do you know those videos that people put online about how we're like the zombie apocalypse is now is it is now because we'd like it was like yeah anyway I'll probably cut all this because this is a video game podcast so we're... <laughs> <laughs> don't you fucking dare this is gold I don't mate. come on I don't know look, I'm not I, I know it is like a bit old man yells at cloud but. Yeah, I don't know. It just, it just was. It was just. A, I don't go out very often, and and I don't think I will. I would think I will continue that. Is what I'm saying. But this time out of choice, <laughs> I think I will now choose to not go out best. anymore. Probably best. Yeah, probably for the best. Anyway, there's no segue into this. I was trying to. Is there any way I can seg into Biomorph? Um, and I don't think there is, Lyle. Is there really? There it is. You did it. Congratulations. Well, that's it. Yeah, that's that's the segue. Biomorph, a Metroidvania. Now. I have a question before we get into talking about Biomorph, and it's one for both of you. I know, Chris, you haven't played Biomorph, but it's a question for both of you. Is it actually the year of Metroidvanias, and we've 
it's just happened? Or have we all just... I, don't, like, I, just I, I have a theory. Please. <clears throat> so, tail end of last year, there was a lot of natural vanians we were all playing. Yes. Like, um, yep. Cookie Cutter, yep. Last Breath, there were a couple. There's a few more, but I, I just remember talking about it a lot on the game. Yeah, no, part. definitely. And I think we all kind of were like, Oh shit! Yeah, they're pretty good, aren't they? I mean, we've always liked them, but like, there seems to be quite a high. We sort so of I think we, we all liked them, them, didn't we? I don't, yeah. I don't think we all knew we were all big fans of that no. genre. And I think we're just more aware of them. So Maybe. That, I think I think they're always coming out, but I think we've been a bit more. There's definitely covering... some higher profile ones, like obviously the Prince of Persia one in January. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm off. I'm not sure if it's sort of sits because it's got some sort of uh, like Ubisoft of. They've not published it, but they have. There's some sort of investment from Ubisoft. I yeah. remember writing about it. I, I don't 100 percent remember what I wrote. I don't. I don't really. I mean, I barely remember the anecdote I told three minutes ago. But like, <laughs> Biomorph is quite a different Metroidvania. It well, Lyle, take it away. You, you reviewed it, I, so I did. I did. I did do a review of it. You did a review. Um, I did do, in fact, a review. Um, so. Before we get into what Biomorph is, actually, for, in terms of this Metroidvania thing, I would like to say, as a quick message to everyone making Metroidvanias, mm. that at some point I am going to run out of introductions to reviews <laughs> when I'm talking about Metroidvanias. Yeah. Because yeah. at this point, it's like, ah, there's been lots of Metroidvanias it's, this it's year. It's been a great still year for loads Metroidvanias. <laughs> this year's been really good for Metroidvanias. Yeah. I really like Metroidvanias. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Please stop. I no, I've but, done yeah, all no, of it's... them at this point. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, ironically, Biomorph. by the way, sorry, just to say ironically, Go. neither Metroid nor Castlevania. No. Both absent. Very much both absent. Hmm. Maybe, maybe Metroid's coming back. Oh, don't, don't. Yeah, didn't want didn't to excite you too much. Yeah, so Biomorph is basically, it is, it is a Metroidvania, right? Yeah. <laughs> been loads of them this year. Sold. <laughs> um, <laughs> sold. Yeah, uh, and the kind of the main hook of it is that like the pretty much like the vast vast majority of enemies in the game you can transform into them. So like the very early on, there's one that can charge through walls. That's like this big like like sort of like a big cow, a big bull maybe, and it can charge through walls. So you can transform into that, and it, there's like certain breakable walls you can get through. There's one that floats above spikes. So if the spikes that are in the way you can manage them. There's one that has, like, early on, you don't have a projectile attack when you're not transformed into someone. So there's one that fires a projectile so you can hit switches that might open doors and stuff like that. And there's all these different things. And it, what's really cool about it is that these creatures, like, initially when you first see them, it's like, if you kill this creature, you can turn into them. And as long as you're on, like, the same screen, you can stay transformed into this creature. But once you, like, go through, you know, like, a little doorway that sort of, morphs you over to the next screen you you like pop out of it and are just back to your normal like weird watery alien form that is your normal character of harlow with, with talking hands with talking hands in, in, yeah independently talking hands i should say left yeah and right. yeah it's sort of just sort of argue with each other it's mm. generally what happens throughout the game um but then eventually once you kill this enemy and like transform into them enough individual times you'll be able to like equip it and transform into it whenever you want so it kind of goes from, you know, oh, I've killed like eight of this enemy. Now I can do it wherever I want. And that usually means that that's when you can kind of access more secret areas. Because for the most part, like the critical path, the enemies you need to like get to the next room will be in the room you're in. Yeah. But it's more like once you're like going somewhere a bit different, you might find like, you know, there's a health upgrade or power up or something like that behind that. Uh, one of the things I think that Biomorph is maybe strongest in terms of compared to, well, maybe not strongest, but very, like, very, very strong as a Metroidvania is that it has learned from other Metroidvanias. Mm. Like, what it has done is it's, like, it's got the whole, th this thing where if a room has, like, a gold border on it on your map, that means you found everything in it. It took, it absolutely, immediately, when, the, at the start of this year, when Prince of, the Prince of Persia, mm -hmm. the Lost Crown, I think, mm -hmm. uh, up, uh, released and did that thing where you can take a screenshot and put it on your map so you always know what uh what things there are that you know you can't access yet and you'll be able to know to go back there it, it has taken that wholesale and it is brilliant that it has because yeah. that is a fucking great system like this wasn't something that was there when i previewed it like a really? couple of months ago that oh, was they that really was they, they saw that they thing. really they, like yeah. last minute they were like get that get that in there but and that reminds great. me of like the, the the gears of war active reload thing where once people saw that they're like 
oh we need that in our game now and this is and that, it's fine like it, it 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 it's not it's not a negative at all it's it's keep more more all of you do that like that is a oh, good yeah, thing exactly. yeah, the, the, i must admit i did like the gold outline i don't know if i've seen mm. that before in one where like it's it's I very see. categorical like you have don't don't bother pixel hunting you have done this room that's it i'm like almost certain i have seen it before it but be. i couldn't say the exact game i had you know mm, what i mean like fair. but it's one of those things where i was like yeah that's so helpful um and then alongside that, even your sort of standard combat, you get different weapon chips that you can equip. So like at the start, you sort of have like a punch, a very standard video yes. game punch. So you get close to an enemy and you punch them. But then, you know, after that, you'll get like, you get a bow that recharges each time you go to a save point or of like it's ammo, or you get like a spear that's a bit longer range and attacks more rapidly. And there's all these sorts of things, different bits you can equip. There's like sort of passive... I think they're called mementos that you can equip, which do like, like they'll be like this. It gives you an extra like heal that you can use between save points. It's also very slightly souls in a way that I don't really think it needs to be. Like you lose yeah. currency when you die, and yeah, all that sort of that 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 general thing. It's it's not like hugely punishing, but because like there are a lot of mm. the save points, and you can fast travel between them is if you sort of do this weird upgrade to them to make them fast travel points. So, like, it's it's usually not hard to get back to where you are, but it's always one of those things where it's just, like, it's a bit annoying that I have to bother. And I, could I had a few not... rooms. I don't know if this is me or if this is the thing you would have experienced also, but I had a few rooms where I felt like there were... Hotspots is the wrong words, but, but bits that I was dying a lot on. Um, yeah. Where, because... Oh, in fairness, it's often because I was like right by a boss and I was trying to rush to it or some, something like that. Like mm, I just wanted to yeah. get back there. I sometimes found the, the save point, um, well, the, the, the fast travel that double up as save points. I sometimes found them in a place where it's like, this is kind of an, an annoying spot because mm. there's just a boss three squares round that way. But it's kind and if of it was just one get... square away, it'd be okay. Yeah, like I know that, that I think I, I think that. a lot of them have boss. That this is the thing. It isn't actually boss. I'm, I'm saying boss battles. It wasn't actually boss battles. It would happen. It's often I would just there would just be a room that I was finding particularly difficult to get through that was just normal enemies, but just the layout or the the platforming plus the layout um, of the enemies. And and I would find every I would like so you would spawn four rooms back, and then every time I go back there, I die, and it'd be like I, it, yeah. I don't want to like I don't want to start throwing negativity on the fire because I actually I really liked this game to begin with, but. I didn't finish it, and there was a few things that I was going to ask you about, because when I was like putting, you, you sent the review over, and when I was editing it together, I was taking screenshots in, and one of the screenshots had like four health pips. Yeah. And I was like, I played, I think, eight hours. It's quite a lengthy game, I think, unless it, I just died that much. It's, it's pretty lengthy, yeah. I wouldn't yeah. say it's like, it's not like 30 hours, but it's like no significantly over 10, I think, like sort of 12 to 15, maybe. Okay. Well, like, well like I like started, that. well, everyone starts with two of these health pips. Look, imagine them as, not to keep souls so like comparisons, you, you're, but you're, you're flasks, the flasks, flasks, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and you hold the button down and you, you use them and, and you can upgrade them so they give you more health. It is, it is very much mm -hmm. an Estus flask style thing. Dead cells, yeah. I suppose you could say dead cells, potions, True. whichever you want to compare. But I played eight hours and I started with two. I still had to. And yeah, that did I was, miss them? It was. It was. Um, it was one of the equipable mementos, right, I think. Okay. But, and, and what's quite difficult about that is you don't have a huge amount of no. slots for them, which is which is one of those things. There are a few things that do take biomorph down a little bit. I think it's yes. very stingy with those with those memento slots and because like you can find more of them and you do as you progress but it just one feels of those like things, i wanted uh, more of them naturally like i didn't want to have to go hunting for those because i felt like i had at one point six to eight so if, if, yeah. memento slots if we what would you like they're just they're buffs aren't they they're buffs for some, yeah they're like, like they're your passive more buff, strength yeah. like you, you'll hit harder or you'll you know that kind of thing like you get yeah and i think i had six to eight of them but i could still equip two and 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 it's like because mm -hmm. some take up like three slots. Yeah, some, it's like, like it's like, better. It's hard to describe it, but like, also the trouble is, is the ones I had equipped were they felt really significant. Like they 100%. felt like I do not I was, want to unequip these. I have no. The that exact sounds same cool. Experience. I cannot remove. Like they would they would be like massive strength buffs. Or well, the one, in fact, the one I found that I just could not unequip was there's one I think it's a memento that speeds up how quickly you heal. 
Mm, yeah, and, and I found that to be essential because otherwise it's like it is a kind of it doesn't drink it like an Estes flask or like a dead cell thing, but it's it's quite slow. And I found that the more I needed to heal was during in boss battles, and it's just there's yeah. no way without this buff I could. I could heal. They, they move too quick. There's too much fire going on. So that's like one slot that is almost a, for for me. It was like this permanently taken. Yeah, um, I, I think. Yeah, it, it, that's the thing. I don't even necessarily know that. Like maybe you don't have enough slots, but I think because you have such a some really essential mementos, and yes. you, like it just sort of discourages any experimentation. Yes. There was so so much of the game where I was like, well, I've got these three locked in. I'm not taking them off. I just picked up a new one, and that's like that would need need me to have three more slots, and I don't have any. So I'll just literally never use it. And mm. And I think there's a few other bits to the game. Like, I don't really think you get stronger fast enough. Like, I was going to ask you, you about get, that as well, yeah. You, you get these passive upgrades that are like a tiny bit of extra health or a tiny bit of extra attack, but you don't need to equip. They're just sort of like automatic. You've found them. Mm. You get this little buff. But like, th I, I, like, at the start of the game, I didn't really feel that much different in power to I was, how I was at the end of the game. Not, not enough really to be like, like, there would be still very early on fairly basic enemies that would take off like a third of my health just that, by one yeah. into them by accident your health is really limited in you, you take damage and... real quick well this is the thing i was going to ask you about right is mm -hmm. what you're describing because i i 100 agree with you is it because and, and i i don't know if this is the case and you might so you mentioned the like the the morphs themselves yeah you can equip you can once you've unlocked a morph you can actually equip yeah. three of them at a time on and that you can like you say once you've done it switch whenever you want yeah. there's no punishment it doesn't cost like a mana resource no or anything like that but you mentioned like they were good for the secrets and stuff and i was like yeah that's true but i will say again i haven't finished it uh, but in the yeah. eight hour eight or nine hours i didn't find that many secrets that required it. There definitely are some. I, I, I know there are. It did yeah. feel like this is more of a thing. I'm gonna. It would be like an end game mop up. You know, like when you do when you like in any Metroidvania. Once you've got all the powers, you can then go around all of the map. You can whip round via tough. fast travel, and you, that's the whole point. Um, but I wonder if the reason that you don't feel stronger is because I feel like I was supposed to use the morphs more than i was like, combat like in boss battles and stuff but i did yeah. try because i often thought well if i've had these each region or area has like three enemies in it yeah which are like three that. new skills essentially three new abilities mm -hmm. and i did initially think well it probably wants me to use some of these in boss battles because i've but like not one boss battle i played did i actually do it in the end it was like no i just play as me i'm just it's too it's too much it's too difficult. Yeah, I, not it is. And that, it feels like the vast majority of them as well are quite lumbering. Like, yes. you can't really move about and dodge things as easily as them. But you still have the same sort of like dodge that has immunity to it, where you sort of turn into a weird blob and slide across the yes. floor. That's like your yeah. avoid damage, like dodge move but um but outside of that you're just sort of like like you'd take up like maybe like four times more room on the screen alone than than harlow would so you'd get hit by more bullets unless you yeah. were really like able to time your dodges perfectly and maybe your attacks would just be a bit slower and yeah I'm, i was pretty much the same in that okay. like outside of like a couple of very specific bosses i didn't really morph much and that's weird as well because one of the things about the whole system where you unlock morphs by killing more of the enemies. If you do that even yeah. more so, again, you upgrade like their damage or the amount yeah. of times they can use their special ability and stuff like that. So, so yeah, there's even like extra reason that's like they're supposed to have got more powerful, but realistically, I didn't use them in combat very much, so it didn't mean that much almost, if you know what I mean. There, there are some bloody weird ones though. Like there's um, one, I don't even know how to describe it. It can't move, but mm. it press a button and it kind of, does like a almost like a dalsim yoga levitation and oh, reveals yes, secrets yes. and stuff on the in the area mm -hmm. and like it's such a because i do think the the morphs are analogous to sort of metroidvania Metro Metro powers that you would get yeah what i and i'm not again not ragging on it because i did actually I did like what i played just not enough to finish it currently like, there are mm -hmm. other things it's, it's busy at the moment um it's always busy yeah it's always <laughs> busy to be fair but like i found that the actual metroidvania powers that you found not only do they kind of they're very much very much without fanfare i found mm. them a bit kind of a bit tame like the first one i think was like a wall jump and it's like okay that's that, that one that one's fine that's that's 
standard metroidvania yeah although Always i will say it. a lot of metroidvanias at the moment seem to be starting with a lot more traversal which is another thing entirely. yeah and then i think the second one is the one that lets you like traverse electrical wiring yeah and I, th- I felt like I'd waited sort of so long for that that when I discovered it, it would be like this revolution, and it's like well, I don't really need yeah, that. Yeah, that was a weird one, in fact, because in the preview I f- build I played, I got that in the preview, so it was like right. it was sort of supposed to be like the first like hour and a half of the game, at oh. a push, maybe even less than that. that would so I was it. expecting, so I was expecting that for ages while I was playing, oh, and I was okay. like, I've still not got it. So it wasn't, it, it wasn't that it was an early game thing, I don't think, unless there's some really we weird way to it. get to it. Yeah. yeah, it was literally this thing where I was like, because I, I was expecting that so early on, because I was like, well, I've been to this area, I've had this power before, and like, it's like five hours in that you get it, and it's sort of, it's this area that's kind of like a bit further back, you mainly yeah. use it at anything. Yeah. So yeah. It's... No, I, I, I do like it, and you obviously like to think you gave it an eight out of ten, so it's like, we're, I'm not yeah. I'm not shitting on it at all, I do, I, I do think... I mean, listen. You reviewed um, Turbo Kid the same week, which got a higher score. There are what I'm saying is there are other. Yeah. It, it's been a strong year for games. It's been a strong year uh-huh. for Metroidvania games. Um, it sure has. I'm not saying Turbo don't play it at all. Like you know, you give it an eight. It's definitely and also there's a demo, so you just go try it. And it's it is yeah. the biggest issue I had with it was like the map itself. I'm a I'm a. There's certain things in Metroidvanias that for me are like non-negotiables because because there's so many of them. Like the map to me felt like the squares were too big. Um, okay. And I wish that each yeah. square was like cut into four almost. It just felt like I wasn't. Ne- anyway, listen, I'm not going to keep moaning about a game. I was already. I'm going to be old man at Cloud. Um, <laughs> but go read the review of Biomorph as well because Lyle played all of it. So, like, hit more reliable than me. I didn't finish it. So, um, but we can stick with indie games, I think. Chris, why? Can we? Because Harold Harold's an indie game, right? I would say so, yeah, absolutely. If, if we did an, an award for best video game name, I love saying it. I love yeah. saying it. It's a great name. Harold Halibut. Halibut. <laughs> well, when anyway, you say it, it's even better. Oh, I know. So Climation, Harold Halibut Climation. is a <laughs> is a Metroidvania roguelite, oh, souls light, action RPG, <laughs> city build and management sports sim. Wow, where all you those play things. as <laughs> No, it's really not, obviously, course it ain't. It's it's hard to kind of <laughs> it's very Right, I'm going to start off on the negatives because... Oh, bloody hell. Because I want to get it out of the way because it, it's... A... Can you remember a game on the Xbox last year or the year before? No, it must have been two years ago. Pentiment. Yes. Oh, yeah. yes. Where the art style was very like ye olde, worldy, 15th, 16th mm-hmm. century, Germanic, Germanic, kind of quite dull to a lot of people. But you kind of... You get under the surface and like there's a, there's a hell of a lot... There, so Harold Halibut, Halibut. But very much a favourite of our community, by the way. That game. It is a good it's game. Good. I, I sure. really enjoyed it. Yep. Um, but Harold Halibut, I'm just, just going to keep <laughs> saying it. Is it the sequel to Simon Salmon? No. That's a shame. No. Um, it's it's very dull at times. It, oh, it, okay. It can be quite dull at times. There's a lot of walking back and forth, a lot of slowness to it. The um the story takes a lot of time to kind of progress, and you kind of the bulk of the jobs that someone says, oh, can you go and talk to this person for me? So you go and talk to that person. They go, oh, thank you. Could you go and talk to this person? For me? Right. And you're like, just, you're flitting back across this. I mean, you do go outside the confines of this shit, but you, there's a lot of back and forth and it does get quite, quite dull. And some of the, like the menial tasks that you, cause he's a handyman. It's very like, it's a bit basic. Can, can but, I just check? His name is Harold Halibut. Yeah. Okay. It's just, I'm really struggling because all I'm doing now, like Patricia Place, that it's just, it's just, I'm really trying to concentrate, but all like, my brain is just going, no, no, like Carl yes. Cod, oh, yep. Carl Cod, yeah, Roger Ream. So oh, well, that, that's a brilliant one. <laughs> I mean, it's that's absolutely exceptional, Christopher. That is, is it is Harold Halibut married to Sally Salmon? No, he's a bit. He's so I'm gonna get right. So Harold Halibut <laughs> yes. is a handyman, a handyman on this yep. ship called the Fedora One, which has been submerged in this water on this alien planet, and they've they've got knocked off course by a solar flare. And Fedora, yeah, as in that's the, na- that's the name of the ship. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm but... assuming, yeah, okay, yeah. Well, that's fine. I'm just his his name's Harold Halibut. The yeah, name of the no, ship isn't right. that weird? No, no, fair, fair point. No. I'm just um, getting flashbacks of Rick Mail and Bottom. Like there once was a pair of trousers <laughs> called Dave who lived in a forest, and it's like, yeah, yeah. So Harold so, Halibut. I, lives, I can't say it. 
<laughs> What's in that glass? It's just water, sadly. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, so he's this handyman on this ship, and he's not really anything special. He's very kind of like... No, this is him as a character. He's quite so like... No, um... I've just realised Harold, handyman, Halibut. Any, any more H's they wanted to... Um, he has no. hair. Oh, he's Harold the hat. No, he's I'm a not human. Even... I couldn't say how. how I, I really feel like I'm doing this a disservice. Because You're I not, mate. Really, it's just it's 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 a difficult really game to discuss because of what it it really it, it is. is. Um, and it's the the story's fine. <laughs> is it <laughs> fucking hell, all right, mate? No, hang on. <laughs> right, it's the it's the the character interactions and the way that you kind of really really enjoy the the humanity of it, and is it's very British and it's like presentation the the humor's great there's a good kind of core story here which is not just about what's going on in the world um it's all about the, watching this guy kind of become more than what he always thought he was supposed to be basically but like the the kind of thing that really sells it is the the way it looks obviously because it's been completely like animated with plasticine models is there and any like? Is there any romance in there? Okay. Oh, mate! Pipe <laughs> down. I'm trying to talk. God's sake! God's sake! Right. You should make me walk the plankton for that. <laughs> Fucking hell! Poor, poor slow bros. They don't deserve this. No, they don't. But listen, there's a really lovely review on the website that you you know you liked it. <laughs> so, so we can say what we want here. <laughs> for heaven's sake, no, lads! I'm, I'm going to bring this. Oh my god! I feel like you're having a whale of a time, but we need. To... I know it's not a fish. It's not a fish. I get it. But... Oh no, that's really good. I didn't even pick up on it when you said it. I was like, I am. Oh, he said yeah. a whale. <laughs> yeah. Not as shark as you used to be. Yeah, that's. Um, yeah, no, I got that. One. Fuck's sake! Right. Anyway. <laughs> oh fucking! I feel like I've really like. If you haven't, mate. Right? People will enjoy. You. It's it's a good game. It's banter, a weird isn't game. It? Banter. Because it's all about the banter. banter. <laughs> Something like that. But no, it's it's a really good it's a really good game. It is a bit slow in places. Is it long? It's about about it's a bit similar to Biomorph, I think. About twelve to thirteen. Because the, the thing that stands out, and I, I get the feeling it's one of those things that people will sort of look at and love or hate. Because I I look at it well, and it's it's got that kind of Ardman claymation look to it. Like I think it's it's, it's not hand drawn as such. They're all, it's like hand. Is, it, is handmade the right term? Handmade. Yeah, like yeah, it is. Handmade, it is... What's happened? It's been like basically handmade and then digitized, obviously. Okay. Um, so you're playing the creations that they've been, they've moved and, you know, painstakingly created over like a long time. This game's been in development. But like, <clears throat> if you, it, the kind of story I would compare to kind of like Wes Anderson films, which they're very like quite slow and, the, but they're all about the character. And I think if people, want to try it. I mean it's on Game Pass. Oh is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So download it. Download it, play it. It, it does take a while to get going, but kind of once it's, it's two to three hours once you've kind of got into it, you know, it's well it's well worth playing. The story's good. Um it does get better. Um <laughs> but it's just like it's really it's really well designed. <laughs> it's like an it's like Bioshock in a way, the the like the the world that they're living in. It's it's, it's quite impressive. What I was going to say about it. No, it it is one of those games though. It's like it's kind of like <coughs> talking about a walking simulator. The way I would say it is that you could is is it is what it is. Like you either like that sort of thing or you don't. Like it doesn't look like the sort of game that if you really hate really story driven games with with less interaction no, you won't, involved because gonna, there's not a lot you know, to do. Like, no, lot. no. But the, the story is the story, and the story sounds like it's good. Yeah, it is, and the characters are great, and he's a really good character. Like you really do grow to love him. And there's a lot of like sweet moments where he's just on his own and he's just talking to himself or singing to himself, and it's it's just it's really well put together like story wise and the kind of the dialogue. Um, mm. But yeah, I would I, that's all I, that's all I got to say about. No, that. it's fine. I mean, if you thought that was reductive, listen, I, I can talk about the Rogue Prince of Persia a little <laughs> bit, which is because like it's really weird because some you know, do you know when you play this is something like the audience may not get as much as you guys, but like Lyle, you mentioned it when you're talking about Metroidvania, like that. It's a bit like a Souls game. Like once you've played a Souls game, there are certain 
yardsticks that are measured by like you know people you say an estus flask you know what an estus flask is you know mm-hmm. people know what that means you know a bonfire when, you know when bloodborne came out people would still refer to the lanterns as bonfires you know people still call them bonfires even in elden ring you know it, it, it's there are certain mm-hmm. things and sometimes i don't know if you get this but when you're writing about a game that has those kind of things you almost want to try and not mention them you, you know, yeah. it's almost like, oh, I'm challenging myself that I will not mention Dark Souls in this very clearly Dark Souls-inspired game. Now, that's mm-hmm. a really weird way of saying this is nothing <clears> like Dead, um, Dark Souls. But I had that exact conundrum when I was writing about this. Because do you mention... I mean, they are literally... Motion Twin... I'm um, sorry, Evil Empire are literally the, D- the DLC developer of Dead Cells. It's not like front and centre marketing. It's not like... I mean, there is. I think there is like on the trailers like from the creators of the DLC and stuff. But this is like when I was talking to Mick Fraser off the podcast about this, um, and I was talking to Steve about it as well. Like this, this isn't just like Dead Cells. This is Dead Cells, but Prince of Persia. Now I can't tell you if you think that's a good or bad thing. Like, I think that's a good thing. <laughs> I think that's a good thing. Like I've played about thirty minutes of it. It wasn't a long preview for the hands on, but mm-hmm. it is. If you if you you both played Dead Cells, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I suspect most of the audience has. If you imagine Dead Cells, I mean literally Dead Cells as it is, and add a wall run and swap it all for Prince of Persia assets, and, and that's, that sounds terrible, but it, it is. It, this is Dead Cells. It is a roguelike. It is early access. It is even like following the path that Dead Cells took where it went into early access and matured, and then beca- it became... I mean, it was always good, Dead Cells, like when it first came out. But good like, thing. This is the thing. Um but there's such a weird thing with it for me. Like I was playing the Rogue Prince of Persia, and I I still can't remember because I haven't played Dead Cells in a while. But I so in the Rogue Prince of Persia, you've got a kick where you can kick people into other people, or you can kick them off into traps, or certain you know you can stun them by kicking them into one another. And that felt like another thing that upside the wall run that was like new, and, and I was like, is it? What was that in Dead Cells? I think there is a kick in Dead Cells, new. isn't it? Maybe, but I, I'm gonna no. say it, it's been a fucking know. while. <laughs> yeah. That's what I mean. But like the wall run does make things different. Um, but the thing is, it's not a lot of games try to be Dead Cells. No, and a lot not of games really. don't quite get that. You know, um, Dead Cells. By the way, I should have started by saying this. Dead Cells is like ten out of ten, phenomenal. Like the a bit like Hades, like we we talked about it years ago, I guess, where there's like there's two types. There was a lot vying for that sort of genre, but there was like the Hades likes and there was the Dead Cells like. And the reason we would say that is because those two are the very tippy top of the 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 pile. Mm. So who better to make another one, but on Prince of Persia, than the team who literally were involved with Dead Cells? Like I I I, I, th- I wonder if people will find it negative. I I didn't. I found it played really well. The soundtrack, by the way, is phenomenal like phenomenally good it plays great like the only thing i couldn't get used to a bit was the dodge rather than like being a dash through the enemy you press dodge and you kind of jump over like you, you mm. sort of somersault over them so you're then behind okay. the other side of them it just took a little bit of getting used to because it is so similar the wall run's great the wall run is going to be one of those things where i feel like as they add to it you find so much cool stuff because like the <laughs> I wonder what the demo, the, the the way other people play in it, but like it was like within minutes, I had found a secret that I'm pretty sure you're probably supposed to find later because I was like wall running, jumping off walls, wall running a bit more, mm-hmm. yeah, because the wall run's not long, but it's long enough to get you places, and I like straight away was like, wow, this is a lot of, yeah, it's it's I I'm really looking forward to play. I, the one thing I can't report on, because I simply don't know, is how much the game there is. There's definitely a boss because it whipped my ass. Um, but it even has that same structure as Dead Cells, where you, know, you finish an area, you go to the next area, and eventually get to a boss. I, I, I'm really kind of liking <laughs> what Ubisoft is doing with the Prince. You know, we get yeah, like a Metroidvania, it's... now we get in like a roguelike. I, I don't know what's next. I mean, there is, of course, the remake is at some point. Yeah, but, but so... it's been going on for about 20 years at this point. It feels like it. But like, yeah, I'm... I'm... I'm I'm gonna play it. Like I'm gonna definitely play it on hopefully yeah. on Steam Deck. I would imagine it will be good on there, and I I will sit yeah. and play that. And that's a, it's, and I found I felt the same with the Lost Crown on Switch. You know, it just felt like a really good game to play on like a handheld device. Yeah, like it looks it looks really cool. So you know, 
Cool. Go and watch the video preview, read the words. You can read words on all of these games on godisageek.com. Wow, I really can't speak today. And that moves us neatly into some listener correspondence. And I'll just tell myself to play the jingle. It's time. Actually, I'll interrupt the jingle. Breaking, <gasps> breaking news. I can't play the jingle. Chris isn't here. What am I doing? What earth am I doing? <laughs> so I played half the jingle. I played half, half the, jingle. the jingle. That's all we can do. Because there's still a here. Chris, but not a Chris yes. Hyde. So it was yes. half of it. Yeah. Actually, it's also because these are questions that we had to cut off on the last episode because I had to dash very suddenly and very urgently. So these might seem... Two. We did this before and they were terribly out of date. Uh, let's see. Let's see. <laughs> Nike G said, and sorry we didn't get to your questions, but we, we are now. Uh, his son is playing through Elden Ring and has just beaten Rikard in Volcano Manor. I feel that he is blitzing through the game too quick and isn't doing much in the way of dungeons and mines for the extra baubles that I, and items the game offers. Um, any tips for getting belligerent teens to play games properly? Sounds like he's skipping past all the optional content, and so I mean, bloody hell, he must be pretty good at it. Yeah, sounds like he's doing fine. If he's, if he's the volcano up, manner yes. at that point, like that's pretty good. Because Rykard's not, he's not like one of the hardest bosses, but he's pretty bloody it's deep in, isn't it? Yeah, it's very deep, balls deep. So, well, that's, that's I'm uh... not listening to this. No. <laughs> <laughs> I hope. Um, Roger Ream. All I will say is that life is worth living and life is like a box of chocolates. And it's very much like Elden Ring. You never know what you're going to get. And you only live once. And I don't really know where I'm going with this. No, well, I was just... wondering whether to help you or just to see what I'm happened. Just, I'm just riffing. My, hey, man, I'm just riffing. I'm you not know? against it. You know, and uh, that's my advice. Uh, anything to add, Lyle, or? I think say that exactly, and I think you've got this uh, sorted. You'll be like, yeah. Please, cheers, Dad. I'm gonna go and find all the ambulance. Do you know what though? Like, I've gone back to Elden Ring in the last month just to go and like rinse like all the get extra ready bits and pieces. Yeah, getting ready because, yeah, I, like it's just a. Fr- <laughs> that was worth the video podcast alone as well for me. <laughs> it's just uh, it's just an incredible game that yeah. that deserves to be explored. Like. I don't think it's it's you can't get a lot like because my kids I don't know how old your son is but like they just don't they just don't want to sit down and go and find everything they just want to play some. No, it, I'm with on. you. I understand. They're too that. quick. They're, they're, and, or it's either that or it's Roblox or Minecraft or Fortnite or Overwatch. It's it's games that you can dip in and out of. They don't. Yeah. It, I think you get to a point in life where you just want. You want, like you start reading more, or you you want, you play a game with a story because that's what you want. You don't want the ease of it because it's all about what the kids are playing. Anyway, I don't have any <laughs> solid well, advice. No, I, yeah. I, there's a secondary sort of part to this, um, and I hesitate to ask this because I have a worrying suspicion that all three of us are going to draw a complete blank. But I'll ask it. Uh, he's in fact he's also answered your question just there. He says I've bought Hell Divers to play with my 14 year old son. So. 14. Um, oh. Despite the fact that the Peggy rating... Peggy or Peggy? Doesn't matter. Peggy. 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 The Peggy yeah, rating... I should know that, right? I should know Yeah, that. you should. I'm tired. Mm-hmm. It's the Peggy trailer. rating is 18. So currently after three hours of play, given that this was two weeks ago, I'd suggest it's probably a bit more. Um, <laughs> probably. But after three hours play, I cannot see any reason why this game would be rated above a 15. Can you think of any previous games where you feel the ratings board has gotten the age rating completely wrong? I've got an answer for this very quickly. Yeah? No, oh, I can't. That's the answer. Sorry, I thought you meant <laughs> that's you the answer. Like... We're all gonna have. Yeah, no, yeah. No, it's, it's, it's cool. But it's it's one of those things where, I mean, realistically, I don't have children and I am not a child. So when those ratings pop up, I don't really think about them because why would I? That's that's my answer. I I would at least default that maybe there would be more of a chance of the people on the podcast who have children have a vague chance of having answers to this. But I have the least chance. I kind of think none of us will. But let's see, shall we? Maybe so Chris White game, has like a, a real game where banger. The ratings board has gotten it wrong. That you think? Yeah. I can't really. I mean. What was The Last of Us? Was that 18? It must have been an 18, Fucking right? Fucking better have been. <laughs> I mean, it's fairly... Gr- uh, well, it's, it's weird, isn't it? Because I think... Was it? Different ratings boards in different countries think of... I mean, there's always the thing of... Well, like, in in Britain, 
and in America, like violence and sex are seen very differently in terms of ratings. Like, yeah. So there is that. It's it's a weird one because I think it's an advisory, isn't it? Well, I mean, I suppose it's not. It's not actually an advisory. It is a is a rule slash law. But I think like with a lot of things, it's an advisory thing. You know your kids better than anyone else, and you know, Chris. I mean, your father are two, and so am I. And, and I wonder if they're like my kids are actually very different. I say kids, one of them's an adult now, but they're very different people that that deal with things in very different ways. I don't know how that happened. The same parents, but it did happen. Well, yeah, no, my my eleven year old, she's she won't go anywhere near anything that looks remotely scary. And she, right, this is what I mean. And, you and, know, so you and then know Evie, that. when yeah. she was about eleven, she had my switch, and you know when you turn the switch on in the last square, the last game you played, like the, yes, on the left. Yeah, it was Resident Evil um, yeah. Revelations, and she. She'd been playing it without, because I'd been on Switch for a while. She played through it, and then when I was like playing The Last of Us, when I was a bit older, because when it came out, she was yeah, yeah, it was ages ago, wasn't it? Three, <laughs> so <laughs> late, a lot later on. So and she's now playing it's on like, hardcore or whatever. The different, yeah, I, I played through The Last of Us with her because I know her limits. But I think it's <laughs> oh, different. Totally. I, I, you know, even Last of Us Two when I was, I didn't review. No, I was playing you it for guys, wasn't I? No, I was playing it for guys because I did that completionist. Did I review it? it? You reviewed it, yeah. I should yeah, remember you, that. So I mean, I remember very, the game, sorry. It's the words I wrote. They were very gracious and gave us two codes. Of, you know, they were very, I, very good. I mean, it may as well I have been a different that, person, let alone a different lifetime. But, but you, yeah, you kept, know... Yeah, she kept coming in and seeing it. And, but, sure. Yeah, certain, certain, I can't, no games off the top of my head, no. There's no, a lot I of can't. games as well. You find a lot of this, like Grand Theft Auto... There's a lot of time in that where nothing happens and you just go around and Grand Theft Auto is a thought story a lot of the time. It's the story, it's a story yeah, that where... I would definitely like say that earns its rating and I w- and it's also it's the kind of I don't think I think that game's got stuff actually fairly early on with Trevor GTA Five for example. It's got stuff fairly early on that I don't think younger minds would understand. Not so much the context for, but the this is bad. By the way, we're showing this. Because we're trying to show you what an arsehole is someone is or how bad they are, and they wouldn't get it because they haven't got the maturity to understand it. And again, I think that's down to parents knowing their children and not just saying, "Here's a game, fuck off to another room yeah. and, and whatever." Um, I, stick it, st- he's got a couple of other questions, by the way, that we can we can oh. ask. Um, and this is a specific one for you, Lyle. He says, oh, "Do you go to okay. a specialist retailer for your shirts?" I go to a, the specialist store of Primark, and uh, <laughs> uh, I um, my very my very uh, my sort of original shirt of the Bulbasaur one was not from Primark. That that would be a bit weird if it was from Primark. That was like Etsy, I think, and like a very specific store, and it cost quite a lot to be frank. Really, it was, it was very much a treat. Speaking of, a, oh, speaking uh, of Frank. I'll, I'll, sorry, Wait, I'll let you carry on. No, I'll let you carry on. <laughs> I'm excited. So uh, okay. Am I. Yeah, but but yeah, the the rest of it is just like Primark charity shops. Uh, maybe like you know, if I happen to see something particularly good somewhere that's more expensive, I will. But to be honest, Primark tend to have the more garish ones anyway. <laughs> garish. So. <laughs> you said that. You said that yeah. about your own shirts. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. oh, well, sorry, Chris. proudly garish. Frank. <clears throat> yeah. So when I was about. 17, 15, 16, 17. I wore loads of like shirts with like like New York landscape, like cityscapes okay. on and, and really bright shirts. Okay. Until I was watching these standards and Frank Butcher came on wearing exactly the same shirt as me. <laughs> and I had to stop. And from that moment on, I never wore another one. But uh, Lyle's uh, much better than mine. I, I, I never, <laughs> I always wore like just, I don't know where, even where I got them. But yeah, I, 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 I do love, I, I have had a few instances of uh, of people in shit TV shows wearing my clothes and being slightly mortified. Uh, there was, uh, mm. when I was like, sort of like 16 and, you know, just wearing, try, trying to be my most, like, maybe my most insecure self as a teenager, <laughs> not having my style yet. Uh, I had the same t-shirt as uh, the dad in Benidorm was wearing. And I was like, <laughs> fucking hell, I have to burn this immediately. <laughs> Do you know, there are so well, many things that go through your mind amazing. when you're doing a podcast because it's all in the moment, but there's not a chance in a billion more episodes, I thought Frank Butcher was coming up just not it just yeah um this one is to adam and chris and you're a chris so you know you answer first what's your most prized gaming related possession 
Don't Why am I not allowed to have a prized you, game? You can, really? you, you you can, can have, have mine while well, I think, because I don't really have any. Oh. Let me have a look. You, you can... I guess I got but... my own question, I suppose. that's. Well, you did get a very... <laughs> yeah. I... Oh, yeah. Keep going. Keep going. I'm going to get it. He's going to go and get it for the video version. Okay. Um, I would say... I mean, when you say prize, do you mean what's something you think is worth more, or just that you? I feel like just like emotionally most special to you would be what I. I'll, I'd I'll do think. both. Yeah, I'll do both actually. So Sony used to send out a lot of press kits, and a press kit for Bloodborne is something I really do. It's just because that game, for some reason, I don't really know why. Because I'm not like there are bigger FromSoft fans out there. Like I just really love that game. I, it's one of the. F- the first games of its ilk that I really got through. Like, I tried with all the souls. I finished two and three. Actually, I can't remember if three might have been after. Doesn't matter. But Bloodborne, that press kit, I really love. The. Probably can it just above my head here ish. The, the Lego Horizon thing. I really love oh. that for some reason. Because, again, I love that game. And. Yeah, I just. I just really. Like, I just. I built that with my wife and I just. It's not, you know, it's it's it is what it is. But I really like I love I love when things sort of, I love it when games sort of come, go out of their medium a bit, like a Lego thing like that. I love those, yeah. And I really really like that because it was it seemed quite weird when they announced it because Horizon was I think the first Horizon. Then it wasn't even I don't think Forbidden West was out if, if the thing. So it felt kind of weird that it got this like eighty quid Lego thing. So yeah, those I, I don't know if they're monetary wise valuable. But they're two of my. You know. One of them's eighty quid. No, I've heard. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not. <laughs> um, but yeah, that I think is. Yeah, Chris, what have you? What have you? So, <clears throat> I, I, when I got it, I did think about one that I did have, but I don't have it anymore because oh. I think it got lost when, after my ex-wife broke my heart and I moved out. <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> so. <laughs> And it, it was, it was like um, the Raptor Claw from Jurassic oh, Park. Yeah, I remember you getting that. Yeah. Oh. There's a bottle opener, and I don't know where it is. I might, it might be in this house somewhere, I don't know. But this is my favourite thing I own. Okay, so it is. Oh, it's a Geralt. It's just a Geralt. I just bought it myself. I don't buy myself a lot. You know, That's I'm not cool. one for for pretty things, but I just saw him and his long hair and his smooth beard and his firm... I just really like it. And just to be so, clear, you're not looking in the mirror describing him there. You're just looking at your... Because yeah, for the people not... Yes. You know, his, his smooth <laughs> beard and his firm <clears throat> buttocks. Yes, I was looking at myself. Yes. But no, that, that's probably my favourite okay. thing. Do, do, you, oh, do you have one? It would be, uh, I have firm one. buttocks. Well, I have, I have firm buttocks, yeah. Just one. Yeah. Uh, just one. <laughs> the other one's really loose. Uh, so, <laughs> loose is the term you want for buttocks, no, right? I yeah. mean, I would have even taken flaccid over loose, I think. <laughs> Well, well, there you go. One loose, one firm. So, uh, Gaming-wise. Gaming-wise, uh, a Pikachu. I really love, I love my Christmas Pikachu that I got it's from a badass, Pokemon yeah. Horizon screening that I got to attend. Oh, is that where that's from? Manchester, that's cool. yeah. Why is it we Christmas? Got... Didn't you see that like, in January? No, it was like November, I think. Oh, okay, that's fine. Because that just sounds oh, no, really was... weird for me. Yeah. Like, Wait, what? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, like that. that. Really cool. It also, yeah. um, yeah, just a very cool thing to have. Love yeah, Pokemon no. anyway, and sort of weirdly have gathered a selection of Pikachu's. There's a few downstairs as well, and I don't really like Pikachu as a Pokemon that much, but I just seem to be getting good plushes of it, so I'll take it. Uh, uh, but that's my favorite. Cool. That's fair. Uh, um, oh, another one. And then, on. Yeah, and then my other one are just the displays I've got downstairs that I would really like to have in the background of the podcast, but they're so nice that I wanted them to be in the what rooms in? I'm in more often. So. Yeah, I must admit, I've got a few. I, I've been meaning to get up since Christmas, but you know what it's, life's like these days. Mm-hmm. Um, last question uh, for this week is from Deadbeat Punk, and he, I, this, I'll just ask it, and then before anyone answers, someone tell me if there's something I'm missing or if if, I, if there's a meme or. But what's the difference between a chickpea and a kidney bean? Uh, quite a lot. I yeah, suppose. they're different they're foods, very different right? things. Yeah, I, I don't. But I'm know not if missing a, a meme thing, either. right? No, I mean. One of them is sort of firmer, and Loose. I mean, it's not called a bean, so but yeah, that's true. Is a chickpea nice, like but... a lentil? I don't know. I never, I'm not really sure if a chickpea actually does still really count as a bean. It's next to the beans in the shop. I mean, I'm, I know a lot more. I mean, kidney beans, I'm, I'm much more familiar with chickpeas. Hey, I, do, kidney I have beans. had them. You what you hate hey, them? Kidney beans, yeah. Why is that then? What's, what's... Te- texture of them in my mouth? Oh. I don't know the way they feel in my mouth. 
Yep. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, I guess. I guess what, what about chickpeas? I don't mind the chickpea, yeah. Can you not get, do you know, like those little, um, other brands are available. You know, like graze boxes where they're like, uh, like there's mm. a there's a bit of mm-hmm. like some some cashews or a crispy lentil or something. But you can get like roasted chickpeas that are dehydrated or whatever, and like crisps. Is that is that a chickpea, right? I'm thinking of. And yeah. they can have a bit of spice on them, and yeah, because you can make them yourself as well. Oh, yeah, I'm sure you could. Do uh, chickpeas? You can make like a loaf with them as well, like a curry loaf. What? Chickpeas. What? I used to have it when I was um, with mum. Oh no. <laughs> We're going back. Uh, right. So a chickpea, I'm looking on Wikipedia, uh, a chickpea or, I don't know why this needs differentiating, but a chickpea or a chickpea, there's a space, is okay. an annual legume of the fam... I'm not trying to say that word, but it's oh, not all that it. one. It Different varieties are known as a, a gram, a ben... I don't know why that's funny. Bengal gram, chana, garbanzo. That was Italian. That's a good word. Or the Egyptian pea. Okay. So then, if, let's, do, let's do the same for kidney bean. Egyptian pea. Why not? Yeah. Well, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. So. Kidney bean is a variety of the common bean, Fasciolus vulgaris. Mm. Oh, a vulgar little bean yeah. is the kidney oh. bean. Oh well, I mean, this shouldn't come as a surprise, but named for its resemblance to a human kidney. Oh. Yeah. There were red, red kidney so. beans, which are known as the common kidney bean, or or, or <laughs> no. That the, the no, I'm not no no. There's a light speckled kidney bean. Uh, there's a red speckled kidney bean and a white kidney bean, uh, oh. which is confusingly in Italy known as cannellini. Oh, actually, sorry, cannellini I added confusingly. Therapy. They didn't. That didn't. Say, doesn't say confusingly. <laughs> I added that. And it confusingly. Mean, no, because I'm thinking of cannelloni. Cannellini. That could be a mistake. Yeah, um, cannellini beans are a thing that I've bought in the shop. I buy a lot of beans. Yeah, there's nothing. I like when beans are good. Yeah. I've never seen these I red speckled she... ones. No, I, I didn't know that was a thing. It sounds like they look like they'd be like a bit ill looking. They, yeah, they kind of look like jelly beans. They, you know, the um, oh, what's yeah, that expensive like a... brand that really tastes like the flavor, like popcorn flavor? Jelly um, belly. Jelly belly. Yeah, mm. they look a bit like jelly bellies. Like the, yeah. Mm. I mean, it's a bit of an uninteresting go. end to the <laughs> section, if I'm honest. <laughs> it but like, if I, like I, beans I... or not, doesn't it? So, but, yeah. do you. you is there any bean you like, Chris? Like, is there any bean you like? Yeah, what bean? Are there any beans that have the, an okay texture? Like, is a butter bean as horrible? I as won't a have a butter bean. bean. No. What about mm. sugar snap peas? Yeah, I don't mind them. Yeah, interesting. Like what about jelly beans? <laughs> well, jelly yeah, beans. They're not really. Beans. <laughs> They've got beans in the name. Yeah, I think okay. you'll find. There are other beans that I like, but not fruit or vegetable beans. None. Not no. baked. Obviously, we know not baked beans. Oh, uh, but sugar snap peas are okay. Yep. What about peas in general? Um, don't really like peas. Sweet corn? I know we're getting way off the beans. I like sweet corn, yeah. Oh, sweet off corn. The, great. Off the cob. No, but what about not off the cob? Um, I'll eat it. Like if, if it's in a sandwich, like tuna sandwich or on a pizza, I'll eat it. Okay. So peas, yeah. no. <laughs> I love this as an end of a podcast. <laughs> Just discussing different small vegetables that Chris might like. Kidney beans. No. <laughs> so basically not a, not, not a fan of legume. Legumes. Oh, I'm, I, no, unfortunately not. And they've not done anything wrong to me, you know. You've not been wronged by a I've not been <laughs> fiddled by a bean or anything. No. But, um, just don't like them. Play the jingle. <laughs> yep, I'll play half the jingle. Let's play it. That's all you get in just that little bit. Uh, thank you very much for the, for being on this very strange edition of the God is a Geek podcast. I would say, I think. Listen, when you when you book Chris Chris White for a podcast, you know that there's a possibility of some serious sexiness and shenanigans that could happen. Um, mm. And that's that's damn well what people you know want. I think. <laughs> damn, what people. <laughs> yep, that's what we all want. If you enjoyed this podcast, and my God, why wouldn't you have? It started off with a man in his 40s complaining about mobile phones, and it's ended with a discussion on kidney beans. Why the hell? Would, imagine if you just like, well, I'll just skip to the end and see if this is any good. Jesus Christ, now they're talking about kidney beans. Yeah. Why anyway, were the games? Yeah, they, they talk about games. I mean, there's even a halibut in this one. I mean, they just talked about food the whole time. Anyway, if you did enjoy it, in all seriousness, and you watched on YouTube, do subscribe, do hit the bell, don't miss any future content. If you really enjoyed it, we're going to be recording a exclusive to patreon.com slash pod, 
slash podcast. Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> yep. It's 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 um we're gonna be doing a podcast that's just for Patreon on patreon.com slash god is geek. But there are more reasons to go there. You can meet our Discord community of lovely people um who sent in the questions two weeks yeah. ago, admittedly, when we said do you want to ask questions and they did and we just I rushed off in the middle of the episode and I've got an yeah. idea for a I've got an idea for a video series for the for the patrons. Yes. Chris White's has been. It's a video series where he has a bean every week. <laughs> And would, would you want you're suggesting that i'll do that okay it's what, what i swear to god <laughs> i won't i won't bait beans for nothing for, i can't okay but then what if well, what, we... what, what if people want that because now you've said it i would want wait, that we need, we need like, my... to have like a patreon goal of like if we get this many patrons yeah. finally the bean will yeah, chris will be held <laughs> down bean. and poured no no chris will be thrown <laughs> into a swimming pool full of baked beans no i won't be doing that you don't have to eat them then. You don't get to see this body for free. We don't, you can wear clothes. Mm. <laughs> All right. Okay, no, we're done. Done. <laughs> done. We'll get that sorted. Uh, make sure you do subscribe if you have somehow found this podcast randomly. Make sure you leave reviews if you listen on Spotify, Google Play. Uh, there's lots of ways nowadays of listening to a podcast, uh, Podbean, whatever it is. We hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we are aware that we're a bit more spread at the recent. We- we're working on it. It's really busy. Like It's actually a really odd week to do a podcast because there's a lot of games we're playing we can't talk about yet. Mm-hmm. But it's a nice chance to talk about some indies and stuff. So you know, and hey, hint, hint, that Patreon exclusive podcast will be good for indies. Thank you to Chris White and to Lyle Carr for being here this week. Thank you, and we will speak pleasure. to everybody else next week or whenever you choose to listen. Bye bye for now. <laughs>